Well, in a world of emerging Christian leaders, a new generation of spokespeople who are talking about faith from an authentic and biblical worldview. Our guest here today, Johnny Moore, would be at the top of that list or near the top. Johnny, it's so good to meet you. This is our first time. It is. But I, uh, we have some liberty roots, you and I. I did uh, seminary there for three years back uh, in the dark ages, many, many years ago. And uh, I've watched you from afar, and we have mutual friends, and so it's great to see you. And uh, you're here for a primary purpose, to talk about your new book, which is called What Am I Supposed to Do With My Life? Now, when I looked at it the first time, I'd been married 33 years, and I thought, what am I supposed to do with my wife? And then I thought, no, 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 this is, this, this is the wrong book. So anyway, this is a great book about finding the will of God, helping millennials, helping young people discover the will of God. Um, you say in this book that finding the will of God is, is, is easy. In fact, I go even further than that. I, okay. I, I say that you know, one of the like, great and persisting questions in, in Christianity is this about finding God's will. And, and actually, it's one of the great lies from the pit of hell that this is a difficult question. And, and I know like, when you make a statement like that, people think, Okay, you know, it's that almost an arrogant thing to say, right? But, but it actually isn't when you read the Bible. The Bible says remarkably little about this phrase. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you, what does the Bible tell us about the will of God? It, it says almost nothing about it, which is crazy, right? Because we talk about it all the time. In fact, in the New Testament, the, the phrase itself is only used a couple of times, and the primary use is, is in the, the, the letter to the church at Thessalonica. And Paul writes, this is God's will that you be sanctified. It says nothing about what you do with your life. It doesn't say where you live, it, none of that stuff. And yet, as long as I've been a Christian, probably as long as you've been a Christian, when we talk about God's will, it's almost always about where we live and what we do. And every college student I worked with at Liberty, when they said, what is God's will for my life? It was about what job they're gonna have or who they're gonna marry or where they're gonna live. And I think we've just made this way too hard. All right, Johnny. So you have just recently made a change in your career path. For years, you served at, uh, as a vice president at Liberty University. I think one of, your, uh, one of the things noted about you is you're the youngest uh, university vice president in the country, maybe the world, maybe the universe, I don't know. <laughs> but it's quite an achievement, congratulations. And then an opportunity comes for you, if I may, to, to work with uh, Mark and Roma Downey. And now you are the chief of staff for their emerging businesses and ministries and media entities. Congratulations. Thank you. And we want to know more about that. But how did you determine that that was the will of God? Because, you know, being at liberty, it's not like being out of the will of God. And working for Mark and Roma, that's not like being out of the will. I mean, they're great, two great choices. How did you make the decision? You know, it's kind of amazing. I was at Liberty for 13 years, right? I mean, and, and at the most amazing moment of Liberty University, we, the university has over 110,000 students, a billion dollar endowment. Transition of, 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 of the founder to, to, to uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. A successful Jr. transition. That's right. Boomed and grew the university, and I was right in the heart of it. Yeah. And yet, out of the blue, this change happens in my life. And you know, the first question people ask me when they find out I wrote a book about God's will is, am I a hypocrite? Did I apply it? And I did apply it. In fact, yeah. in the sovereignty of God, God had me spending months and months and months dealing with this issue before I had to face the biggest question of my life. And there are two main principles about God's will that I write about in the book. And I would say that my story reflects both of those stories and principles. And the first principle is God's will is more about who you are than where you are or what you're doing. It's more about who you are than where you are. So it's more about you're doing. character, personality, giftedness as opposed to geography. Yeah, because you take you with you wherever you go. That's true. Right? And sometimes you face a fork in the road of life and you can, I could stay at Liberty, I could go become chief of staff to, to, to Mark Burnett. It was a decision that I had to make. And, and I don't believe that if I would have stayed at Liberty, I'd have been making the wrong choice or going with Mark Burnett, I'd have been making the wrong choice. I had an opportunity that God presented to me and I took this path. And then and here I am doing something pretty, pretty remarkable as Mark and Roma uh, bring faith to big and small screens all around the world. And congratulations on that. That's a marvelous assignment for you and we'll be praying for you and we celebrate with you. What's it like for people though who, um, I think you refer to it as being maybe at war with the will of God. What, that, that is a very strong word, being at war uh, or phrase. That's a torturous place to be, isn't it? Well, and the war is actually a war with yourself. It's right? a war within. That, that's right, because we, we, we are always in this place where we want to do what we want 
to do, right? I mean, it's, it's that self-interest that, that is the root of every one of the problems we have in our lives, the immaterial, the great ones. Self-interest is at, at, is at the root of every great global problem that, that we have. It's this war within ourselves. And that's why the first principle is so important, that God's will is more about who you are than where you are, what you're doing, because you work on the who, and it doesn't matter many times where you are, what you're doing, because, because you will be a person that will bring light to the place you are. And, and sometimes we just have to stop worrying about God's will in the then and there and start worrying about it in the here and the now. It's uh, as uh, a, a guy I used to work for, John Maxwell, he had a book called Today Matters. And it really is about today. You make good decisions today, and then you manage those decisions well tomorrow and the next day. Um, you write on page 13, I love this, we want to know how he has ordained the rest of our lives, every detail and every decision. But guess what? He is never going to give us those answers because then we wouldn't need to walk in faith. We, we, we would either strut in arrogance knowing that the end goal of our lives and understanding the grandeur of the vision of God intends us to carry out or we would have lived disappointed and in bitterness because of the trials we would suffer and the obstacles we would face. Final sentence. If God told us everything, we wouldn't need God, so He doesn't for our own good. You know, we, we which kind of goes to the second principle, by the way, of God's will, which is you go until he stops you. You stop okay. waiting for him to tell you to go. So is it like a series of open doors? You just, you just, you, you have another open door and, and if, if, it, if it looks pretty good, you walk through it? You keep moving in the most logical direction. <clears throat> and by the way, the, the quintessential example of this is the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. And when you read the story of the Apostle Paul, you, when he preached in all these big cities in, in the time period of Jesus, I mean, why did he go to these big cities? One reason. Yeah. They were on roads. Big, they were he big just, cities. They were big cities. Yeah. There were people there. That's he had right. to preach the gospel. That's right. And then occasionally God appeared to him in the middle of the night or a circumstance happened and said, don't go that way. But you don't see Paul begging and pleading for God to send him a sign from heaven to go this way or that way. He just went in the most logical direction. And that takes more faith than if God were to drop a blinking sign from the sky. Johnny, you write about World War I hero Alvin C. York uh, from... Um, Middle East Tennessee, you, you, we're, we're in this season here as we're recording this of Veterans Day in the United States and Remembrance Day in Canada. World War I veteran, you, you, you talk about the journey of his life. It's a great profile and I've studied his life. My father is from that same area. Um, what, what was it about him that compelled you to write about determining God's will for your life? Uh, you, you give us a little bit of a line, uh, 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 a dialogue of his life here. What, what do we learn from Alvin C. York a hundred years later? <laughs> you, you see a figure who is in hindsight custom designed for his responsibility in, in the world, right? And one of the points I, I make in the book through, through his story, through the story of the Apostle Paul in fact, is that you more often see the will of God through the rear view mirror than you do through the windshield. That's a you, great you, thought, yeah. It, because you see it. The handiwork of God, what God was doing back then. He was preparing. That's these, right. They, yeah. Alvin York, he was preparing the Apostle Paul. He's preparing you and I as we, preparing people that are watching this. Like, like maybe God has constructed your entire life, the good parts and the bad parts, your gifts, your passions, all for a, a singular goal in life. You know, the, the Apostle Paul is my favorite example because I always, always taught in church that he was the least likely person to change the world, right? I mean, he's like this Osama bin Laden character that's out killing Christians, and then all of a sudden God changes him and he becomes the writer of the New Testament. Right. The least likely person to change the world. But actually, he was the most likely person to change the world. I mean, if you want to understand the world of Paul, all you have to do is understand three things. The world of Paul and the world of Jesus. Roman politics, Greek culture, and Jewish religion. He was that combination. He was. I mean, Paul was from Tarsus. It was the mm -hmm. center of Greek culture and education. He was a Roman citizen. That allowed him eventually to preach the gospel in front of Caesar himself. And he was trained by the top rabbi of his time, Gamaliel. Yeah. He was custom fit for God's purpose. And there's story after story like that in the book and story after story like that in history where God was preparing us before we knew it for something we didn't know until we saw it. Leave us with this thought you write about. Um, it's where you say, Get moving until God stops you. You know, I, I dealt with college student after college student for so many years at Liberty that would come into my office and they would tell me, God just needs to show me what I'm supposed to do with my life. And I would tell them, just get moving. Mm -hmm. It's like when we pray these prayers to God, God, why won't you solve this problem? 
it, it, God looks down at us and says, I am solving this problem. I put this burden on your heart. And I think more often than not, the will of God is moving in the most logical direction. It's not about waiting for God to show you what to do or to tell you what to do. You work on who you are. That's why the first step is so important. And then where your passions and your giftings mix, just get moving and God will stop you. He'll open and close doors at will. Common sense plays a role in the will of God. You know, God gave us a brain How about on that? purpose. Yeah. He expects us to use it, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I think more often than not, God's will is very, very logical. It's not illogical. You know, there's, there's this verse from Solomon, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. It says, man plans his way, mm -hmm. but God directs his steps. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems a bit of a contradiction, doesn't it? Yeah. The key word is plans. Man plans his way and then God's coming on the side, making sure everything happens. But, but God didn't go to all this effort to give us this brain and all of the wisdom of the counselors in our lives for us just to kind of, you know, wait for him to do everything for us. No, we just get moving and he's right there with us every step of the way. We've got to continue the conversation. And uh, we hope you'll stay and we can, we can talk some more in our next segment, okay? Glad to do Thanks. it. This, this is uh, Johnny Moore, and you uh, see why he is such a contagious Christian, uh, a joy to be around. The book is entitled, What Am I Supposed to Do With My Life? And it is available on our e-store. I hope that you'll get it. It is a wonderful book to help you and others that you know and love find what to do with their lives. What's next? Maybe you have someone who's going through a very difficult time and it's very confusing. This book can be a wonderful compass to help point the way in a very practical, meaningful way. Get them in a direction where they can move forward and serve God and serve others with excellence. Uh, again, available in our e-store. Johnny, thank you. We're going to talk some more.